So you want to make a website, but you have no idea how. We're going to start at the very beginning by learning hypertext markup language, which is more commonly known as HTML. As we move along our learning, we'll get into the full technical details of HTML and build some simple web pages. Part of what makes web design and development so fun when compared to other forms of software development is that you can instantly see the results of your efforts. Even if you've never made a website before, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by how easy it is to make your content appear inside of a web browser. HTML forms the foundation of nearly every website, no matter how big or small. So by the time you finish learning about HTML, you'll be ready to move on to other technologies like CSS, JavaScript, and much more. As we'll learn, there's no individual technology or language that enables the creation of modern websites and web applications. Rather, it is a broad collection of technologies that gives us the pieces we need to complete the puzzle. If none of what I said makes any sense to you right now, don't worry. We're going to take things one step at a time. After this video, we'll get into a more formal introduction to HTML as a language, but first, Let's just dive right in and create our first web page, step by step. To create a website, all we need is a text editor and a web browser. Let's start out with the text editor first. A text editor is simply a program that is capable of creating or modifying plain text files, and every computer comes with a text editor built right in. If you're using Windows, we'll start out by using Notepad. If you're on a Mac, you can use text edit in your applications folder. However, be careful because a more advanced word processing application like Microsoft Word or Pages on the Mac will oftentimes provide additional styling rules and metadata that are hidden from your view. This won't work for our HTML page, so make sure that you're using a basic text editor. Like I said, text edit on the Mac or Notepad on Windows will work just fine for now. Once you have your text editor open, simply type in some text as you normally would. I'm going to type in the phrase, hello world, which is a common test phrase used in the field of computer science and software development to test that a system is working properly. Next, save your file in a place that you'll be able to open it later and be sure to save it with the file extension .html. So I'll go ahead and save the file here, and I'm going to save it to the desktop, and I'm going to name the file index.html and hit save. If you've already saved the file as a .txt file, don't worry. Simply find the file again and rename it with the extension .html and you'll be fine. After you've saved your HTML file, leave your text editor open because we'll need it again later. Now for the web browser part. A web browser is a program that allows you to view web pages and browse the web. If you use Windows, the browser that came with your computer is called Internet Explorer. There are other alternative browsers that you can use, such as Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox, but we'll talk about that later. If you're on a Mac, the browser that came with their computer is called Safari. My web browser might look different from the one that you're using, but if a web page is coded properly, it should look very similar on any computer. In fact, as we'll discover, that's part of the beauty of designing websites. Let's go ahead and open our web browser. Again, if you're using Windows, the browser that came with your computer is called Internet Explorer and it should have an icon that looks like a big blue E. If you're using a Mac, the browser that came with your computer is called Safari, and it has an icon that looks like a compass. If you typically use another browser, like Firefox or Google Chrome, those will work fine as well. So let's go ahead and double click this. And once you have your favorite web browser up and running, you can go to the file menu and select open and open your file. Or you should be able to just double click on index.html. In your browser, you should see the text that you typed into your text editor. 
Now, that was surprisingly easy, wasn't it? You'll find that creating HTML documents is a bit more complex than that, but in general, especially in the early days of the internet, a simple website is just a collection of HTML files, similar to any other files on your computer. Inside of the web browser, you'll be able to select the text, but you shouldn't be able to edit it. But what if you want to make a change? Well, that's actually very simple. If you closed your text editor earlier, reopen the HTML file that we were just editing. First, we'll type in some new text, such as the sentence, look what I can do. Next, we'll save over the original document by going to File, Save. Then, we'll go ahead and switch back to our web browser. And all we have to do is click the Refresh button. Clicking the Refresh button will tell the browser to fetch the latest version of our document. So, if we've made any changes, refreshing the page will allow us to see those new changes in our web browser. Before we finish up, here's a quick tip. When we refresh the web page, we can see the changes reflected in our web browser. As we continue to create and edit HTML documents, you'll find that we use the refresh button very frequently to see the latest changes. In the interest of saving time, it's a good idea to learn the keyboard shortcut for refreshing a web page. If you're using Internet Explorer on Windows, you'll want to press the Control key and F5 at the same time. If you're using Safari on the Mac, you'll want to press the Command key and the R key at the same time. This will refresh the browser. Using the keyboard shortcut is much faster than pointing and clicking on the browser refresh button every time. And that's it. You've made your very first web page. Making your own custom content appear in a web browser is hopefully easier than you thought it would be. Now, obviously, creating more complex websites will require more effort. But as I mentioned previously, we're going to walk through everything in full detail and take things one step at a time. In the next video in this series, we'll get a more formal introduction to HTML. Thank <laughs> you.